Hello, my name is Carl and I am the owner of this Mahindra 2538. This video is about doing the 50 hour service on the 2538. A caveat, I am not a mechanic and I did not grow up around tractors. This is my very first tractor, but the uh, this service is very expensive to have done by the dealer. So I decided to buy the stuff needed and try and do it myself. It mostly consists of just changing filter and oil. So we will see how it goes. This is uh, the stuff that I purchased to do this uh, service with. And so here are some filters. There are uh, filters for the motor, for the um, hydrostatic transmission, uh, and an air filter and a fuel filter. These can be purchased uh, from my local dealer uh, as a package for about $200. I was able to get them on Amazon and eBay for about $150. Here's the fluids that I uh, just purchased today. I bought all of this at Tractor Supply. Uh, there is 10 gallons of premium universal tractor transmission hydraulic fluid. There is a uh, two gallon bottle of gear lubricant that is for the uh, front axle. And then there is uh, six quarts of 10W30 motor oil for the engine. And two tubes, I'm sure I only need one, but two tubes of grease uh, for greasing the various fittings to help with the job and clean up during and after the job I purchased uh, this large uh, this large jar of shop towels and some hand cleaner and some nitrile disposable gloves I have four of these 15 gallon drain pans or not 15 gallon, they're 15 quart drain pans. I have four of them. And here are some of the tools I bought especially for doing this service. There's two different types of filter wrenches. Um, a fairly large one like a pair of pliers there and then a chain one that's sort of like vice grips. There, I also purchased the grease gun and this flexible um, flexible funnel. Also to aid with uh, filling, especially with the transmission, I purchased this lever action bucket pump. So it will go in the top of these five gallon buckets and then I can pump the fluid in rather than trying to pour uh, five gallon buckets of hydraulic fluid in. Uh, besides all this stuff, I also have just the regular bunch of tools, pliers and wrenches and such. So that's what all I uh, have to do this job with. So I'm going to change the engine oil and cartridge. I'm also going to change the air cleaner since I went ahead and got it. It was part of the, um, the dealer's filter package. So I'm also going to uh, change the transmission oil and filter and front wheel drive axle oil, clean the strainer, and uh, grease the fittings. So that's what I plan to do. This picture shows the location of the various uh, fillers and drains. The transmission filler is back here while the transmission drain is here. There's an engine oil gauge on this side. Right next to it is the engine oil filler and then the engine oil drain. And then the front axle drain is in the middle of the front axle. I don't see a filler for the front axle. We will figure that out. Here's the filler for the uh, front axle 
it does have a dipstick on it. Here's the engine dipstick. Fluid needs to be between those two notches. So I think I need to be able to get to the engine to get the various filters off. So I need to uh, open the hood. The first thing you do is loosen this guard to bring it forward like that. Then there's a little catch right here that lets the hood go up. These side panels are just clipped into place, as you can see right there. Just have to pull up hard on them to get them on. So on the left hand side, here's one of the fuel filters. On the right hand side, there's the engine filter and the other fuel filter. Okay, so here's the back of the tractor, and this yellow, that yellow thing right there is the filler for the transmission. And here's the shield for the PTO, okay. It only has this window right here, this right here where you can view the level of the fluid. Okay, here I am on the right hand side. And these two yellow painted bolts are the drains for the engine. You can see they're just uh, aft of the front wheel and then looking towards the back this right here is the transmission drain okay here I'm at the very front of the tractor looking under the front axle and there you see the drain for the front axle and behind it, here's the drain for the front axle right here. There's the ones for the engine. And the one for the transmission way back there. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take those off and get everything draining. So I guess my first caveat would be um, don't use a pan like this, at least not for the, tra uh, the transmission. This has a, a plug thing that, that uh, pulls up like this so the fluid can go in, but it cannot, uh, it doesn't drain in, into the container as fast as it's coming out of the transmission. So I knew that uh, one of these containers would not be enough for the whole transmission, but it was filled up and overflowing before I could even grab a second one to stick under there. So, we made a bit of a mess, all the dark area you, down there is where transmission fluid uh, or hydraulic fluid came out and kind of went all over the place. So I would suggest either having just an open pan um, and uh, better yet, one that'll hold all eight and a half gallons from the transmission so you don't have to uh, try and swap them out because when you go to move it it's going to slosh and spill and so uh, yeah these weren't a good idea at least not for the transmission another thing to keep in mind uh, the the drain plug for the transmission is a 22 millimeter plug and i needed a big huge cheater bar in order to get it off it was uh, painted and so it, it was really hard to get started and um, I used the six point socket uh, I'm afraid that if you try to do it with a 12 point you'll round it off I almost rounded it off with a crescent wrench before I realized that it wasn't turning at all so I would uh, recommend a cheater bar and a six point socket 
22 millimeters for the uh, engine or the transmission drain. Okay, I'm going to do the engine drain and I'm going to go ahead and try uh, another one of these containers because I don't have uh, the other kind I described that was that's just open. All right, well, these are the engine plugs. They're magnetic. Um, This one here seems to have a lot of goop on it of some sort. This one's not quite as bad, but there's a little goop right there too. So I'm not quite sure uh, how to read these. Usually I see people talk about um, them being fuzzy with some metal shavings or something. But anyways, here's a picture of it if anybody has any ideas about what they what they should look like. These are also 22 millimeters. They uh, they weren't too hard to get off, but you had, had to break them loose. And as soon as they broke loose, then they were okay. Here's the messiest of uh, of those two. All right, so get it pretty much cleaned up. That right there is something hard like a sealant or something. Okay, here's the other one. Same thing with this glop of stuff right here. It's feels like a hardened resin or something. Okay, well that's getting pretty well cleaned up. Okay, so these that's an engine oil plug. It's magnetic. And uh, here it is all cleaned up, ready to go back on. Here's the engine oil filter. See if this wrench will get it. Okay, here's the new engine filter, it says to lubricate this gasket with engine oil or grease. I'm going to take a little bit of the oil that we have here, just lubricate around the gasket. And it says, to spin it on there until it makes contact and then give it another uh, quarter to half a turn. Okay. Okay, so the, the uh, front axle is draining. Here's the plug. It's a 14 millimeter. It wasn't too hard to break loose. One note about the front axle plug, the drain plug, had Teflon tape on the threads. Uh, I'm not quite sure why and I didn't have Teflon, Teflon tape to put back on it, so I just made sure it was good and tight. Okay, so it took me a while, but I 
finally found the uh, the transmission oil filter. It's this right here. So I'm on the left hand side of the tractor down underneath the floor pan. Floor pan. Right there. Okay, I just changed out the um, the transmission filter. This these pliers were not good and couldn't get a good enough bite on it uh, to turn it. At least not I couldn't. I had to use these vice grip types, and these did a real good job. They crushed the uh, the filter, but it came off. Okay, so the transmission plug also is magnetic. And you can see this is real fuzzy. And it even looks like iron filings. See as I push it around. So I'm guessing that's one of the reasons you you do this change at 50 hours is to let it break in and catch any pieces that flake off in the during the break-in period so I'll finish cleaning this up and put it back on okay to start removing this filter this fuel filter right here first remove this plug from the bottom it's plugged it was plugged in right here and then we should be able to spin it off another thing you another thing you have to do is disconnect or uh, unscrew this sensor from the bottom of the old of the old uh, filter this was in the bottom of that so you unscrew it so you can screw it here into the top of this new one once you have the uh, once you have the new filter screwed in place just uh, reattach this plug reattach this plug here we go I just spoke to uh, one of the very helpful people at my local tractor dealer and he said that on this fuel filter it needs to be filled with diesel um, when you put it back on here and so what he suggested was to loosen this up loosen this up like this and then This thing here pumps fluid or fuel I spoke to a very helpful person at the service department of my local uh, tractor dealer where I bought my tractor and asked about um, how to change this filter here. 
because it does not spin off like the other filters I've changed. In this case, there is a 13 millimeter bolt on the top. And it goes all the way down to the slower canister. Hmm. I seem to be losing a lot of fluid. So this filter has this piece of paper around it. I'm taking it off. I don't know if I'm supposed to. I'm putting the filter back on here. And, and I'm feeding it back up. Okay, so there's a, a lesson <laughs> for you. I'm sure you experienced people uh, would have known better than to do what I just did. Um, when you take this, this uh, bowl off, flu uh, fuel is going to pour out of this unless you find some way of um, closing off the fuel supply. I'm not sure how that's done. Maybe somebody can tell me in the comments, but uh, I didn't have much choice once I took it off. I had to just uh, keep going until I could get the uh, this cover back on there. I asked the the guy, the service guy. There's a, a bolt on the bottom, like a drain plug. I asked him if I needed to drain it, and he said, "No, don't touch that." He said a lot of people, they take that off and when they put it back on, they end up breaking it or something, so. Anyways, that's how you change the secondary fuel filter. So what's left is the air filter. Now the air filter is a two-stage air filter here at it is right here. I think it can all just go in together. I finally got this back together. Um, it just took a lot of squeezing and stuff. One thing to note is there is a marking on this cover that says top. So this needs to go up and this needs to go down. Okay, one another thing to note that you should take out and clean and more often than just 50 hours is this right here behind the air filter and the battery in front of the radiator is this screen. Now, this one's mostly clean because I took it out, but it actually, all of this stuff was was in it. So you want to clean this one uh, every once in a while. It's made to come out so that uh, it, it catches stuff before it gets into your radiator grill, which is a lot harder to clean. 
Okay, so I'm getting ready to uh, pump some more hydraulic fluid in. I've already done one uh, five-gallon can, and then I have filled this one up about this far because I want to try and avoid overfilling. I've set up a, I've got this little magnetic light that I've turned on that is shining on the sight glass. Now, the fluid is very hard to see in the sight glass, so um, I may or may not be able to see it when it comes up, but now I'll just pump. It takes quite a few pumps to, to empty this, so if you buy one of these pumps, you'll be doing this for a while. I just saw the fluid come up into the sight glass. See the fluid right at the bottom of the sight glass there? I'm going to give it a couple more pumps and then I think I'll call that good. There's the final fluid level. Okay, I'm going to fill up the fluid in the front axle. The book says that the front axle and the final drive case take over take 2.16 gallons. I don't know if that is each or together. I'm only doing the front axle. So I'm going to fill up some here in the front and then use the dipstick to see where the level is at. It's a tiny bit over full. So I guess that'll be okay. All right, well, thanks to a video I just watched from another channel, I found that the oil fill for the engine is this thing here. It doesn't look like a, an oil fill. It looks like some kind of valve or something, but you pry it up. It doesn't unscrew. You just pry it up with a, a screwdriver, and there's where your engine oil goes. All right, the manual says the engine holds... 1.32 gallons. So we should be able to pour this whole thing in here. Okay, the oil is just at the lower mark. So I'm going to, I have another quart and I will put part of it in. Alright, it's about right in the middle. Okay. Okay, so we drained the transmission, we drained the engine, we drained the front axle. We put the drain plugs back in and changed the uh, two, the primary and secondary fuel filter, the engine oil filter, the transmission hydraulic filter, and the air filter. And then refilled the transmission, refilled the engine, and refilled the front axle. So the only thing I didn't get to do was uh, grease everything. I'm gonna do. I'll do that some other time. Um, but that was uh, basically all the stuff for the 2538 50-hour inspection. Hope you found that helpful.